Hey guys, we're talking today about a tool that I think is probably underutilized by a lot of electric string players, and that is the high pass filter. Um, when you play your acoustic violin, you actually have one built in. Your, that wooden violin body that you're playing cannot reproduce frequencies below about 200 hertz. So anything down there, when you change bow, you actually create a thump sound. If you listen to the string, not the not what's coming out of the F-holes, but if you listen to the string on your violin, you'll actually hear a thump every time you change bow direction. But because your wooden violin body cannot amplify those low frequencies, nobody worries much about them. A pickup, on the other hand, can. not A pickup can reproduce those low frequencies, and it's going to try to send those to an amp. So a lot of times you hear people say, well, when I play my electric, I can hear every time I change bow direction, I hear a thump, thump, thump out of my amplifier. Why does my acoustic not do that? Why does my electric? Well, it's because your pickup can reproduce those low frequencies while your violin body cannot. So we're going to talk about how to get rid of all that. There's basically three types of EQ filters. And if you don't understand a lot of EQ stuff, uh, we've done some other videos on EQ, and I'm going to put a link to those up above here. But just in short, there's a bell filter that you'll see. There is a shelf filter that you'll see, and then there is a roll-off filter, a high or a low pass filter. This is the one we're going to be talking about today. So there's two parameters. There's frequency, which is measured in hertz, and we will talk about sweeping that frequency. And then there's the slope. How steep is the roll-off of that, of that filter? And that's measured in dB per octave. So how would we set this? When he's, well, what generally I will do is I'll activate the filter while the sound check's going, while, the, while somebody's playing, and then I will sweep up the frequency. I will run it up until I hear it start to bite into the tone of the, of the instrument and then dial it back just a little bit. For reference, these are some frequencies on violin, viola, cello, and bass strings. Your open G on a violin is roughly 200 hertz, 196 hertz. Uh, open C is 130 hertz. Open F is 87 hertz on a uh, six-string violin. You see what the cello and bass frequencies there. Now, keep in mind that a, a high-pass filter is not a brick wall. So it's got a slope of a certain number of dB per octave, and you can change that. Um, so I can actually run a, a sweep up higher than the lowest frequency an instrument will make, and it doesn't brick wall that frequency. It just starts to roll it off. Okay, so if, if you see somebody run it up to 200 hertz on a five-string violin, you're not going to think, oh my goodness, everything I play on my C-string goes away. It doesn't quite work like that. Um, if I want to use a high-pass, okay, you convinced me, Matt, I need a high-pass filter. How on earth do I use one? Uh, if you are using a digital front-of-house console, if you've got a digital soundboard out front, generally there will be a high-pass filter on every single channel. Um, and you can ask your engineer to engage a high pass filter for you there. Uh, if you're doing a recording, you can do it in your DAW, and we're actually going to show a video on that in just a second. Um, if you have uh, certain multi effects pedals like the Helix, um, we'll have high pass filters built in um, to the programming of the Helix, or you can even get a stomp box, believe it or not. If you're just running your instrument into a pedal board, into an amp, you can get Broughton Audio, makes a couple of different uh, pedals, and you can go to their website, broughtonaudio.com. Uh, they've got one, the one there at the top is one that just stays on all the time. Uh, and then the two on the bottom, you can see one is a high pass filter you can turn on and off, and the other is a low and a high pass filter. Um, it actually has a low pass filter in it too uh, that can take out a bunch of the sort of screechy bow scratch stuff. Uh, we're not talking about that in this video, but there's one that I'm going to throw up a link to here that we do talk about that. When to use a high pass filter. Uh, as a sound engineer, my rule on that is always. I put a high pass filter on every single channel in the mix, including kick drum, including bass. I always put a high pass filter on every single channel. Um, it can uh, it can release, it can get rid of all your bow thump. If you've got a microphone, if you're a singer, this might be information for you too. Um, when you're singing into your mic and you hear that p sound that that plosive sound i'll do it in a mic right here so you can hear the hear that a high pass filter would get rid of that um, it can also get rid of a decent chunk of wind noise um, if you're outside and you've, you've got a mic on your violin and you're hearing a little bit of wind noise 
a high pass filter can get rid of a fair amount of that as well. All right, if I've got the little Broughton Audio um, stomp box, where do I put that in my chain? Well, it sort of depends a little bit on implementation. I like to put it as early in my chain as possible. In my Helix, the very first thing that happens is I hit it with a high pass filter and then everything else after that, I'm not trying to, to deal with all that nonsense information that my pickup is sort of accidentally producing. Okay, so if you've got a stomp box, put it as early in your chain as you can. Um, if, if you're relying on the front of house engineer to put it on your signal all the way out front, well, obviously that's at the end of your signal chain. There's really nothing you can do about that. Um, it still works. So I do want to give you uh, a little bit of a demo on how to do this. I want you to see and hear how high pass filters work, and then we'll be right back. All right, we're going to do a little bit of work on a pre-recorded track here. I've got a uh, acoustic violin track that I did, and we're going to look at the screen here, and we're going to see what's going on with the, the EQ curve, and then we're going to kick on a high-pass filter and see if we can get rid of some noise here. You can see that over in the bottom left of your screen, you can see just a little bit of nonsense going on. All right, so that's the, the spectrum is, is sort of hearing that stuff down there. Let's kick on this filter and run this up. Now we're going to run this up till we hear it start to bite into the tone a little bit. You can hear it biting in now. We're up at about 400 hertz. Now remember, this is not a brick wall. But you can hear it biting in a little bit. We can we can be sort of in that 2 to 250 range before we really hear it biting into the tone much at all. And, and you see that it's cleared up all that low end stuff. You probably can't hear it through your computer speakers, but all that stuff is down there. And it's it's taken up space in your sonic spectrum and it's it's causing your amplifiers to try to amplify stuff that it, it can't really amplify. So it's sucking up power and it's just making a big mess. So probably not a huge difference you hear there on the acoustic violin, though in a live setting, it would be a bigger difference. We've got a uh, electric violin part here with a pickup on it that you're going you're gonna to hear a difference on. Let's come here and open up this window and let's listen to this. And you can see it too. You can hear all those, you see those bow changes down there, everything below about 100 hertz. All that's bow change noise. Let's kick this thing on. So all that bow noise just went away. And it cleared up. You can see where it's cleared up all that low frequency stuff. And we're going to be back to the C string here in just a second. And we'll see how high we can run this without biting into that tone too much. probably be in the 2 to 250 range without biting into that C string tone too terribly much. So I hope that helps you guys understand how a high pass filter works a little bit better. If you've got some more questions, you can dump those in the comments section here and we will do our best to answer those for you. All right, you guys have a good one.